Denver 7 Now is sponsored by Ferguson and BAC Appliance Center. The best in bath, kitchen, and lighting for your home. I'm Jessica Porter with the latest from Denver 7. From the First Alert Weather Center, here's a look at your forecast. Temperatures are going to be a little cooler tomorrow. 85 will be your high. 92 on Wednesday as we heat back up. 90 on Thursday, mostly sunny. And then the storms return Friday in the evening with a high of 82 degrees. And the 80s will stick around for the next few days after that into the weekend. And even with the hot weather, people were enjoying Labor Day outside. That includes at the Taste of Colorado, where Monday's most popular attractions were water, ice cream, and shade. Denver 7's Gary Broad spent the day talking to people there trying to stay cool. The dog days of summer are here. How hot are you? Really hot. A memorable taste of Colorado this year, though, for the record heat. It is a really hot day. And what better way to cool off than ice cream? Cookies and cream. I love watching the babies first time when they're putting those little dots on their tongue. <laughs> and with the sea of people here today, prime real estate in downtown Denver wasn't a high-rise apartment, it was shade. Just trying to stay cool in the heat, just find some shade, drink some water, enjoy it. Ice cold water, Gatorade. Jessica Fry knows water is in high demand and that's why she's selling it just outside the venue for nearly $4 less than what they're charging inside. I'm doing this for my little one. He's three years old and I'm doing it for the baby that's on the way. That was Gary Brode reporting. We're also learning more about a person who drove through a barricade at Taste of Colorado Sunday night. The driver has been arrested for an alcohol-related offense. The crash could have been much worse if not for the actions of security guard Justin Ward. He says he stepped in front of the SUV to protect a child from being hit. Ward was able to pick himself up and chase down that driver. It only hit the upper 80s in much of Park County, but we're willing to bet it felt much hotter than that for the crews working the Shawnee Peak Fire. It's been burning for a week now just east of Kenosha Pass. Even though we're just now hitting 60% containment, firefighters have managed to keep it to only 70 acres and have stopped it from getting anywhere close to homes. It was impossible to attend Monday's annual Harvest Festival parade in Windsor without thinking of Bryson Zerby and the tragedy that took his life last year. The eight-year-old was riding on a church float when he fell from the side and was hit and killed. In response, more officers lined the parade route today. Riders were told to stay on their floats for the entire duration of the route. And candy was handed out by hand rather than thrown from floats so as to keep kids out of harm's way. After decades of discussion and planning, the Jefferson Parkway project is on hold indefinitely. The 10-mile connector from Golden to Broomfield has been met by roadblock after roadblock. There are the neighbors who don't want to deal with the traffic and the noise. Then there's the property owner holding off on selling out the last piece of land needed. But the last straw proved, proved to be nearby Rocky Flats and a recent soil sample that showed elevated levels of plutonium. There have been soil samples done since the 1970s, which has all shown elevated levels of plutonium. What's going on here is people are arguing about what a safe level of plutonium is. And that's a ridiculous argument. Plutonium, the, the primary reason plutonium was created was to kill people. So why would we want to release any kind of plutonium what happens next will largely be determined by the findings and direction of the Department of Public Health and Environment. Even if it's decided everything is safe, it's highly unlikely, if not impossible, the project could break ground by next year as originally announced. Even as we stare down triple-digit heat, the state is getting ready for snow. As of this week, people driving between Morrison and Dotsero are required to either have four-wheel drive or all-wheel drive with snow tires. Now, the law also raises the minimum tread requirements. We can't imagine this is actually being enforced right now, but we wouldn't recommend trying your luck either way. A walk down Rhino can be like a stroll through a hipster art museum. And just like a museum, you can actually hire a guide to tell you all about the origins of the graffiti. Denver 7's Eric Lufer took the tour. So where are you coming from today? There's a unique story. As we walk through that we see a lot of rhinos. On almost every corner of the Rhino District. You are in River North. A story told through color and imagination. Denver has amazing art. For two summers now, a few times a day. Any of you from Denver? Oh my gosh, you're all from out of town. Okay. Erin Spradlin educates outsiders on where all this art comes from. A group called Menace Resa. You can see them tagged up there. She's the co-owner of the Denver Graffiti Tour. We think it's a great experience for people to come in and kind of see this neighborhood and learn more about what's happening 
locally with our politics a little bit and then also the art scene. The walking tour lasts about two hours. It's kind of cool that you see the respect that these artists have and not tagging other people's stuff. In an area that has been greatly affected by rapid growth. Where we're standing is pretty close to three homeless shelters and so you certainly see an aspect of that on the tour and we feel like it's an important thing to talk about how the growth hasn't benefited everyone. What Aaron is doing is resonating with people they're interested and they keep showing up. What's surprising to us is that people really are uh, tuning in and like to hear about some of the growth changes in Denver. That seems to be a big thing that people talk about. And what's being said through these paintings leads to all kinds of interpretations. The messaging in it is definitely, you know, help people out, you know, love and respect. In Denver. Having, you know, a common value of, you know, being human. I'm Eric Lufer, Denver 7 beautiful art. Well, this has been your Denver 7 On Demand update. Thank you for joining us and check back here later tonight for another update and download the Denver 7 app for breaking news and alerts. I'm Jessica Porter.